Yeah. Well, Simon, we talked about you uh, betting in England and then in Zambia, and um, luckily not getting anything broken, for, yes. as well as uh, apart from your bank balance. Yeah. So when did it all turn around for you? When did you start to realise that you had an aptitude to sort of make money? Well, you've got no choice, really, because if you've lost all your money, you can't lose any more. Therefore, you can only win. That sounds pretty ridiculous, but that's true. You can't escape that. So, Simon, after a, a slow start, you made money, a lot of money, in the, in the city and on the horses. Which game did you find it hardest to beat? Well, there's no difference between the two games. It's just a question of identifying value and latching on to it. I've had all sorts of ups and downs, as I've told you, but uh, one thing I did do, which a lot of people came to do, uh, but where I threw caution to the winds, was when Betfair finally got hold of its, uh, uh, hold of liquidity, which it did about 2002, uh, I began to see the pricing of um, uh, bets on Betfair, like the stock market. One would see accumulation of volume and distribution, which is a chart term in the city, or for judging shares. And the, uh, I saw that there was a horse running at Newmarket, uh, and uh, the, uh, the the odds on the uh, going to the betting offices, I could tell from CFAX or whatever that service was on telly, was 11 to 1. And yet people were screaming to get on at 8 to 1 on Betfair and they were not being accommodated. And I immediately saw what's going on. And so I got on and had 2,000 each way at 11 to 1 and duly won 27,500, I think that's right, it is. Five and a half thousand plus twenty-two. So I had, so I won twenty-seven and a half thousand. I said, "This is really, really interesting." So I went on to make half a million pounds that year. Now, of course, were I a wise man, I would have stopped as soon as the trick ran out, which it did after about six months. It certainly wasn't going to go on forever, and uh, all my accounts. I hadn't had an account with the star racing then, but the fact is that uh, all my accounts were closed. I just couldn't get on. And, uh, but it, that was exciting. It was, that was really worth doing. Is that something you adopted for the sports betting as well? Was that a different beast? I didn't adopt it for sports betting, but there's no reason why one shouldn't or one couldn't have. I just didn't test it at the time. I don't think, um, I would have been surprised that football would have given one the same opportunity. What was striking was how the these uh, intense efforts to get money on, on Betfair, would build up for minutes at a time. It was quite extraordinary. But I, uh, I just feasted. There were many people, of course, who would uh, back it uh, on on course or you know with normal betting officers, and then lay it back on Betfair, but I thought that was nonsense. I thought it much wiser to proceed on the basis that these chaps knew what they were doing, and we would just have to push ahead and have a go, and that's exactly what I did. You know that chap Patrick Veach, who's a very intelligent bloke. Well, he, of course, has taken the trouble to appoint the trainer and the horse and everything to be trained and dealt with, lined up. And uh, he's done the job properly, but I don't know how to do it that way. I don't have any connections, you see. If you hadn't been so successful in the city, do you think you, would have, you could have made it as a professional gambler? Would that have been something that you might have looked into? Well... I don't know is the answer to that. I think probably at one stage I could have. But as to whether I could do that now, I don't know. I, I doubt it. I'm too old, really. I just I lack the... Um, 
lactal drive to do it. Mind you, every now and then I get things right. For instance, uh, about nine months ago, I uh, had developed a small holding in a little company, and I, in the in the months up to February of 2021, I went on adding more stock, at uh, more and more stock at around 0.3 pence a share, and uh, eventually, when the rush came on, uh, I took some care over this because the market had made a huge mistake in assessing what was going on. I sold the stock, I should think, for an average of about 3p, and I made about two and a half million pounds for my family, some of which went into my pocket, which was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the result was that uh, I said to myself when I'd made the money, well, you may be very fat and very old, but you can still think a little quicker than the other side. And I'm pleased to say, I don't rule out the possibility of doing that again. Do you think that the, the sort of brain and thought process that a successful person in the city, analytical, translates directly to being successful on sport as well? Is it the same thought process goes into picking winners yes, and losers? Yes, you must, you must be careful. You've got to think and do your own homework and check it and check it and check it. And by one means or another. And there, uh, I think I have developed some care in thinking. Not perhaps as much as I should have, but the fact is I have d developed some care. And I've enjoyed that. It, uh, I've learned a lot by it. And there must have been a, a massive change in the way you sort of analysed data from when you started in the 60s to oh, now. No comparison. So do, you, so do you think that do you think that with the technology that's available and the information that's available, yes. people with less skill can now yeah. overachieve with the with the uh, sort of advent of technology? So they don't need to be as clever as you were. Well, I, I hope I haven't said I was ever clever. I, I was just enthusiastic. Let's put it that way. Um, a lot of enthusiastic losers out there, though, isn't there? Yes, well, uh, there are people who bet, I suppose, that this is the majority of punters, who make no effort whatsoever to think about things. And, of course, they have no choice but to lose. That's it. And have your, have your sort of strategies evolved over the years? Do you need to evolve your strategies in the stock market as well as you do to keep ahead of the horse racing game? I certainly uh, think that looking at figures, uh, looking at accounts, is a very rewarding activity. But you've got to think about it. It's not easy. Now you made, as um, well, long as my facts are right, you made a lot of money betting on sports at one point, but you don't do it anymore? Or you still do a little oh, bit? Oh, of course, I'd love to have it. I mean, I lost 10,000 on Champions League last night. And, uh, and I'm not proud of it, but I think it was a bit tough having two red cards introduced to go against me. I'm uh, talking about the uh, Liverpool Atletico match. The other one was PSG and Leipzig. I, I thought I might get some money back on those, but I didn't. Uh, so anyway, you live with the uncertainty of it. Well, something else is big at the moment, lots of controversy, Bitcoin. I know it's a bit of a, a flank of this one, but what's your opinion on Bitcoin? Because a lot of people think about investing in that. Well, I wouldn't listen to what I have to say about Bitcoin. A young man about five years ago asked whether he should buy Bitcoin at £500. And I said, I don't think so. I mean... If you buy it, you don't go on a register of shareholders, do you? You can't trace where you are. And uh, I said, I'd be very cautious about that. Well, now we know they worth $60,000 this morning. And I've completely misjudged that. I still don't understand it. and I'm, But I'm not going to get involved because the principal objection stands, which is that you cannot 
follow your investment. And I don't propose to, to do that. Okay, now you've, you're most famous for spotting a good loser on the stock market. Do you also look for losers in horse racing? Are you adverse to laying a short one that you think is over, uh, un, over, underpriced? Oh yes, I would have a go at that uh, if I think uh, it's worth having a go. But I don't think my judgment is worth anything, really. Okay, I've, I've had one or two of them come right, but there are quite a few others that have gone wrong, so I wouldn't pay any attention to that. Can punting be a hobby, annual business, or is that not possible? Uh, it's not possible. You're either taking it seriously or you're not. You can't be serious one minute and unserious the next minute. It's just, you can't. You can't do it. It can't be done. So you'd, we'd never have like a, a fun bet just because the football's on the telly. You you put some work into into it before you had a bet. Work is a very strong word in these circumstances. Uh, but I, I ask friends of mine who follow football and they tell me these things. I myself, uh, I don't even know how the offside rule works. I mean, that's, it's that bad. So I, I really don't, uh, I wouldn't pay any attention to what I think about soccer. Uh, I used to talk a lot, quite a lot to Darren Bloom, who's Tony Bloom's brother. And I haven't spoken to him for years, I don't know why. But uh, as you know, his brother uh, is a very intelligent bloke and has made a huge amount of money betting. And uh, that, I think, is the result of knowing what you're talking about. I've never been in that position. Well, one thing, I'm assuming you do know what you're talking about, and also I assume that your vintners are a lot happier to hear from you than your bookmakers. Well, um, is it is it your interest in wine? Is that uh, investment or purely pleasure? Oh, I I think anyone who invests in wine is mildly crackers. There's uh, it's true that people have made money out of it, but really it's not an investment. It's a deteriorating uh, consumer good. That's all it is. Uh, I I've had one or two very good wines of great age. Um, uh, for instance, they, uh, I had a memorable evening at Maxim's de Paris. Now, uh, the Japanese bought this restaurant in about uh, 1980, and with it came this truly vast wine cellar. And by the time I and Anne went, went along there for supper as a guest of a chap, um, this would have been about 2003, I think, and uh, I, I, there was a wine list there, the like of which I had never seen before, and which I will never in my life see again. But it stretched back to 1800, or something like that. And it really was very, very old. And of course, it's entirely pointless, because the wine is not supposed to be held that long. It, can't, it, can't, it, doesn't, it doesn't live that long. And it's uh, also, in practical terms, uh, a reasonable Bordeaux from this list. Uh, I think I chose one dated 1920, uh, something like that. Uh, it has to be opened. Uh, and having been opened, you don't have time to filter it you, you, because there's the smell's going away, and I should think at least a quarter of the bottle is sediment. Quite extraordinary. To open it means inevitably having it upright, and then that causes more disturbance. I, it doesn't make any sense. I thought it was an interesting wine, and I don't know whether you yourself have acquired a wine of this age, but if it's any help to you, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, a, there's a, 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 young, a young chap out there working in the city, made themselves a nice few quid, and they're thinking they can use their analytical brain to become an a investor on the turf. What would your advice be to them? Uh, don't. 
<laughs> that's, I think that's that's probably the best advice. Yes, but you know, it's, things are changing, uh, and um, for instance, in the light of my experience in the Far East, uh, betting on City Bet, which as you know is based in Taiwan, um, you can make money there, provided you get paid. I'm sorry to say my agent has stolen perhaps a hundred thousand pounds from there, which I find extremely tiresome. Anyway, the fact is that uh, uh, provided you got what is m nil margin betting, uh, I there's no, I mean, it's possibly a percent on turnover, all told. You've got very interesting um, propositions in Hong Kong but it's um, and in Singapore as it happens but uh, I don't and, and Australia too but I uh, you've got to be well placed to get involved there and what people have failed to understand and I tried to get an opportunity to explain this to the minister or the then minister Oliver Doughton and they just didn't understand what's going on but this country will have to do something about raising funds for racing. And the bookmakers are not prepared to pay. They say, well, why should we? The business goes along and uh, you know, there's no point. But at the moment, the yield from bookmakers is, very, is much less than it needs to be to keep a great sporting and cultural feature of this country alive and I think that's a mistake. Excellent and on that note Simon Court well thank you very much. Well I didn't know why you found that interesting but you're very welcome. <laughs>